So a while back, I made a remaster of a video I did around a year ago, and people seemed to like it. At least the people who saw it. So with that, I've decided to start a series that I've had in mind for a while, although under a new name. Instead of the aerodrome, which is what I was originally going to call it, I've labeled it 5-Minute Guides to Aircraft, in homage and respect to Drakenafil's 5-Minute Guides to Warships. And to start off, we will begin with one of the most recognizable Allied aircraft of the Second World War, and arguably, one of the best. The North American P-51 Mustang. The P-51 started life as a replacement to the obsolete P-40 Warhawk. However, the request did not come from America. Instead, it came from Britain, who had placed an order for more advanced and up-to-date P-40s. North American, however, seeing an opportunity, decided to just build a new plane that was in all aspects superior to the P-40, with better mobility, better range, better endurance, the whole shebang. The P-51 first flew in late 1940, using an Allison V-1710 engine, the same engine used in the P-40, which, while powerful, suffered from poor high-altitude performance, the very thing that had deemed the P-40 obsolete months prior. The British, upon receiving the P-51s, realized this, and fixed it by simply replacing the engine with a Rolls-Royce Merlin 66. The very first P-51 saw action with the RAF, and soon after the USA saw the P-51's potential and adopted it. Many variants soon followed, and shall be explained here. Mustang 1. These were the P-51s built for the RAF used as tactical reconnaissance aircraft. Which is funny, given that these were the only P-51s armed with 20mm autocannons. Specifically for Hispano Mark II 20mm autocannons. I think it's safe to say that any Luftwaffe pilot that came across one was lucky to get back. P-51A. The first P-51s used by the U.S. Air Force. These P-51s, unlike the Mustang 1s, were only armed with four M2 50 caliber machine guns. A36 Apache. These P-51s were outfitted with two additional machine guns in the nose, and also dive brakes to help them with the task of bombing things, as they were a dive bomber. P-51B. The first Mustangs to utilize the new Merlin engines, armed with only four 50 caliber machine guns. The Merlin engine and these were actually called Packards, as they were licensed built by the Packard Company. P-51C. Identical to the P-51B in all respects, its only difference being its origin, being built at the Dallas plant in Texas instead of the original Inglewood plant in California. P-51D. An improvement to the past P-51s, using a bubble canopy to increase pilot visibility and aerodynamics, along with other improvements, specifically to the wings. Firepower has also been increased to 650 caliber machine guns from the original four. This would be the most produced variant of the P-51. P-51H. The Super Mustang, outfitted with a newer Merlin engine that gave it outstanding performance at altitude, and was one of the fastest prop-driven fighters when it was introduced. This was the last P-51 ordered by the USA, and despite its advanced nature, was not used in Korea, like many of its brethren, due to inexperience and lack of readily available aircraft. F-82 Twin Mustang Despite the name, the F-82 shares very few parts with the original P-51. Still, it is listed under the P-51 line due to its very similar appearance. Originally built as a very long-range escort fighter for the B-29s, it was introduced actually into Korea since it came too late to serve in World War II. It served in the Korean War as both a night fighter, attacker, and of course, escort fighter. F-51 This is less of a variant and more of a rename, as all P-51s post-World War II were renamed to F-51 under the new U.S. Air Force nomenclature. The P-51 saw action throughout the war as about every single role you can attach to a single-engine aircraft. Tactical reconnaissance, escort fighter, attacker, trainer, were all roles the P-51 at one point or another played, and while the P-51 is well known for its job of protecting the B-17s as they traversed over the Atlantic into Nazi-occupied France, it also served in basically every single front, from Italy to Burma. After World War II, the P-51 saw service with many other nations outside of the USA until 1984, when it was finally, at last, phased out of military service in the entire world by the Dominican Air Force. After that, however, it still saw service in both commercial and private hands, becoming a common sight at air races and a prized collector's item for enthusiasts with a pilot's license. Many examples of P-51 still exist to this day, both in museums and in the hands of enthusiasts, with more flying in air races and private pilots. A worthy end for the legendary P-51 Mustang, for legends never truly die. <laughs>